Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm waiting a little bit more for uh, giving the time to the people to log in into the session. They've told me there were 31 uh, people registered and we are at 11 now. Otherwise, I will start not to lose time. Okay, then let's start. So, good morning, everyone. So, today I have the pleasure to yeah, to give a webinar in uh, the framework of the Charisma project entitled uh, Computational Chemistry as the Missing Piece in the Characterization Puzzle of Biological Mineralization. So uh, I, let's say I've split it in two parts. Uh, a first, let's say more general, um, let's say on the material itself, and then on the characterization, which I think is important for the Charisma project, uh, so to how to calculate, how to use the spectroscopic uh, simulations in the uh, experimental characterization of, of, of minerals, in particular biological mineralization. So, yeah. So, um, the idea here is today is to show some applications of uh, quantum chemistry, uh, the whole family of different tools that are used in quantum chemistry. So including the famous DFT that is used in material science and known by most of the experimentalists as well. And uh, then also some force fields. So let's, that is what we call classical methods for the calculation of properties. The materials that we will uh, investigate or yeah, discuss today are materials originating originating from kidney stones. Uh, the kidney stones are mainly made of uh, oxalates, and then we have also minority uh, solid minerals uh, like wittlockite and cysteine and cysteine, uh, the two systems together. And the second uh, system is the bone, uh, so the calcium phosphate family in hydro um, hydroxy uh, hydroxy apatite, sorry, and the bioapatite. Let's start directly with calcium oxalates. So it's not a very pleasant uh, pathology, which is the, uh, yeah, the, the fact that stones, minerals can be formed in the, in, in, in the kidneys and in the ureter. So what kind of uh, minerals are formed? Well, here you will see a list of the different um, yeah, minerals that can be observed or found in these uh, kidney stones. And we observe directly that let's say the biggest majority of the stones that are collected nowadays, I would like to underline that, are calcium oxalates. From the calcium oxalates, there are two or three types that can be find, find, uh, found in the kidneys. And these are the mono, uh, the D, and also the three, in some extent, three hydrate uh, um, species. Next to these, we have also calcium uh, phosphates, like uh, just uh, the appetite, like bone can be formed, but then you have other polymorphs that can be formed um, with or without uh, defects and substitution of cations. So the calcium can be substituted uh, or we can make vacancies and we can, over, we can have other, uh, other defects and, 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 and yeah, uh, structural uh, defects formed in these, uh, in these minerals. Um, then you have other like um, amino acids or other bioorganic molecules that can crystallize forming solids. But here we will focus on the calcium oxalate. So here is the Bruto formula. So you have a calcium and then a C2O2 uh, anion, which is combined with some water molecules into an, uh, a crystal. Yeah, so we have crystalline water. So that's why we have the mono, the D, and the three hydrate. I also show there uh, a picture with uh, some stones, which where you can see the the, the, the shape, the morphology of the different um, yeah, uh, artifacts that were or the species samples that were that were uh, yeah, taken away from the patients. 
and um, so you see that the shapes and also the, the aspect is quite uh, di di different. It's quite uh, can, uh, there is a high variety variety of different uh, yeah properties for for the for these uh, minerals that are grown in the biological environment. And um, in the meantime, well, uh, if you go yeah, if you speak to to medical doctors, they have developed a kind of way to make diagnostics quite rapidly. And uh, this is just by having a look at the morphology. As you can see, you can have quite strange things there. Right? So dendri dendrite uh, structures, then spherical or just nice polycrystalline uh, structures, uh, different colors and, and so on. So the aspect is also a first uh, yeah, criteria for diagnostics. Now, the question is bef after doing some chemical analysis, um, can we predict and can we understand the formation of these stones, uh, especially if we are looking at the shape and the morphology? So this is what we would like to do uh, in, the, in the first step. So here I show you the different morphologies for the calcium oxalate monohydrate, which I repeat is the most uh, found uh, yeah, mineral uh, that you can found, find in, in kidney stones. And, uh, so here, depending on the environment where these kidney stones, uh, or the, better, the upper, uh, the, the comb, so the, the calcium oxalate is formed, you will have a different morphology. So in the kidney stones, it's typically some uh, plaquettes. You see these uh, hexagonal uh, plaquettes or platelets. And uh, in nature, you find also oxalates. By the way, oxalates, you can find that in plants. And uh, so that is why you can, have it in your kidney stones due to the to your food, yeah, to your uh, to the uptake of of, yeah, of your food. Uh, so in the in uh, in nature you find um, this type of uh, of morphology, and we can say that we dominate this. We we, we control the morphology, and uh, because in synthesis in the lab we can form the different polymorphs. Now, uh, if we can control that, then there is some physical uh, explanation to that. And uh, this is what we would like to, to show in the next few slides. Next to the cod, the, the com, so the monohydrate, we have the cod, so the calcium oxalate dehydrate. Here also we have um, different morphologies, but in fact, an interesting point here is that um, it is, you see this uh, octahedral structure, huh? so this uh, B pyramid with the square uh, base. Um, we also find in, 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 yeah, in the environment, in the physiological environment, you see that you have the formation of a kind of base on these, uh, on these pyramids. And uh, this is directly related to the environment. So complexing molecules, complexing agents will stabilize some surfaces. So this is a, a very nice uh, proof that the molecules uh, have really an impact on the formation of the crystals and the crystal shape in particular. So here also we can control this. We understand why we have sometimes this nice octahedra and sometimes this octahedra with some uh, with, with, with this base uh, surface. So here you see these uh, 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 microscope, electron microscope pictures. So with additives, meaning complexing agents, you see the formation of this base appearing. Now, how do we do that in the modeling? So with, uh, uh, we will start with. Uh, yeah, models that are calculable in uh, at the uh, DFT level, so quantum uh, chemical level, and for that we need to have yeah a limited uh, model, but that is still that can still be calculated. Just to to underline that uh, the calculation level here is up initio, uh, so from pre uh, first principles, and which requires some calculation power. So that's why we need to find. A, a, a representative model which is small enough to be calculated. We can go to larger models, and this is what we will see if we, let's say, uh, diminish the level of calculation uh, and going to what we call classical methods. So these are the, the three species in our uh, yeah, in our solid, which is an oxalate anion, a calcium uh, cation, and then water molecules. Yeah? So the red, green, and the blue species. So what we do is first getting the structure of the bulk. This can be easily obtained from, um, from yeah, uh, diffraction uh, experiments like X-ray neutron uh, diffraction. And uh, this unit cell from the bulk, we can in fact uh, cut it 
along a certain direction. And this is how we obtain some facets, some surfaces. And uh, by the, um, increasing the distance between the two, yeah, the two parts of the, of the bulk, then we obtain, in fact, a kind of uh, yeah, interface where there is an interaction with uh, the, the, the environment that can be water, for example. So we can put water and there we have a model of a surface of our solid in interaction with uh, here the water. It's schematic as you would see, yeah? see as you can see. Uh, we can, for the sake of, well, let's say, make it more simple, uh, um, we can just eliminate the bulk water and keep an, uh, an, a layer of water in order to, to mimic the hydration level of, of the crystals. Yeah? I don't go into more details. Um, now, once we have this, I just, just to show you some uh, formulas, I don't want to, to scare you too much with that, but uh, in fact, uh, the surface exposure, uh, which controls the, sh the, sh the morphology, is controlled by, um, by the thermodynamics of the system. And what we see is that the free energy is uh, inversely proportional uh, to the surface exposed. Okay, so in fact, if we can uh, obtain a value for the surface energy, we can in fact have an idea on how, how what it is the proportional um, or the rate of the exposed surface in question that we have uh, calculated. Okay, so we can calculate surface energies and, and, and so on, surface energies interaction with water. I think this is, yeah, let's say known for people that are familiar with calculations. Um, now we can do this, uh, we can calculate these surface energies for different um orientations yes so different facets uh, bulk can be cut along different uh orientations and here we have uh, the values of our surface energy which is this gamma okay expressed in joule per square meter where we have uh, the different values in this in, in 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 this plot here we have the the, the calculation level but uh, it's the, the values are in fact uh, more interesting to understand what happens and what we see here is that this, the, the surfaces that are exposed for a, a monohydrate oxalate crystal, calcium oxalate crystal, without water, so this means it is in vacuum, it's like the, the crystal would have been grown in space, yes, so without any other in, in interaction around. This would be this kind of, uh, yeah, uh, orthorhombic uh, structure, yeah. And um, this is not really what we see in the, in, 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 in the real experiment, right? So what would be the, 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 the answer to these questions? Why do we see something else? Yes, this is something we would, we would try to understand. In fact, what happens is that we need to put some yeah, interaction with the surface. We need to include some interaction with the surface, like adding these water molecules. If we add the water molecules to the surface, then we will stabilize some facets. And uh, the growth of these facets will be uh, perturbed, will be influenced by that the water can stabilize or destabilize, huh? uh, let's say, stimulate or inhibit the growth of the, the crystal in, in one direction or another. If we put water, then we see this type of, of, uh, of structure, of, of morphology, you see? So this is not really, it's closer to what we have in uh, experiments. I will show you again the structure, if you have forgotten how it looks like. But uh, we are closer, but not completely what we expect, yeah? Or, yeah. And then, um, so here I have again put the, 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 the surface energies as a function of the different orientations. Uh, the different orientations that are exposed are here in, in, in orange. Yes? So we go from uh, low energy to higher surface energy. This is, um, yeah, the lower, the most stable. Huh? Okay. Now, so the more stable, as you can see, the more exposed it is. So we can do this for the other uh, surfaces and, and, and other polymorphs, but we are still not happy. So why do we have this, uh, this structure? Well, let's imagine that we delete, that we immediately inhibit, uh, let's say, artificially one of the surfaces and see what happens. If we do that, then we see appearing the famous pla uh, platelets. Yes. So this means that in one direction is um, inhibited, but then kinetically, because as you might see here, our structures are, or our energies are purely thermodynamics. Yeah? So we don't have taken into account the kinetics. And uh, a way to include that is by, yes, artificially 
um, exclude some orientations. And this is uh, how we will try to understand which surfaces are more or less reactive as well from the kinetic point of view. So the 001, let's say that it is a very slow one, so it will not grow, then we have uh, this shape. But we are not completely yet, the, uh, let's say, happy with that because it were quite hexagonal, uh, hexagon, uh, hexagonal structures, as you remember. And we have here, let's say, almost an hexagonal. Yes, it is an hexagonal, but we would like to see this 010 zero zero facet uh, growing. So we can do that also artificially. And um, so here is a picture of, of the, the experiment. And how do we grow that? Well, in fact, by uh, making the 010 zero zero surface more stable. Okay, uh, And this can also be a kinetic effect. And this is then what we obtain. Okay, so this is then more or less the idea. Um, in fact, this idea of growing some facets, um, um, which is a kinetic uh, effect, is seen in the synthesis itself because we start from a shape which is like this to something which is uh, which becomes more um, hexagonal. So there is some kinetic effect in the growth of the of the of the crystal. Yeah. No, another challenge would be to have a look at it uh, also at initio and at the molecular atomic level. So here you see this uh, the growth of the one to one uh, surface and in competition with the zero one zero. I go maybe a little bit faster because I don't want to I want to show you everything. <laughs> um, um, so okay, at the end we can. All, we can tune, if it is kind of fine tuning, we can fine tune other surfaces, and that's how we obtain the other morphology, as we remember, in nature and uh, in the outside, uh, in one, let's say in oxalate mine or in uh, <laughs> or maybe in plants. Uh, you can uh, you can obtain these kind of little crystallites, and these are just so not grown in hum uh, in, in the living, but in 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 in, uh, in, in, in say in inorganic in environment. Um, so uh, here also we can play with these surfaces and, and understand why we have this shape and not, okay? So for the cut, the same. Uh, we have also some uh, different morphologies, different surfaces, and this is how it looks like. We start with something in the in vacuum, so I, I call this a kind of space crystal, and then we add some water. We are still not happy with that, with this truncated uh, octahedra. Uh, we need to uh it's uh, expose other surfaces and by that we need to here it's clear we need to destabilize the 110 surface by 70 percent in order to obtain this very nice octahedra and um so this is then the the the, the, the summary okay so th this is the the, the idea with uh, no, without extension but now now that we have the surfaces well characterized and we know why they are exposed uh, uh, we can try to understand the chemistry eh, of the of the surfaces. Now, there is something interesting, maybe for those that were quite, uh, let's say, that have seen it in the beginning, on the pictures of um, the, the the dehydrate uh, oxalate. You've seen there were some. Uh, I show. You, I don't know if you see my mouse, but as a pointer, but uh, there are some, let's say, yeah, cavities. Uh, deep, yeah, kind of corrosion effects going on. There were some holes, yeah, in, in, on the on the surface. Okay, this means that there are some yeah defects that that uh, yeah that are made by yeah the presence of yeah of something yeah uh, of an of, of, of one molecule, and um, this is quite known. Well, it's been observed better by uh, the kidney for the kidney stone. Um, from people that are drinking a lot of green tea. And um, we have observed uh, that the molecule that is in fact responsible for this, let's say, corrosion effect uh, in this biological mineral is a kind of complexing agent like this with a lot of catechol groups, which has a very long name, uh, to the epigallocatechin galate. And uh, the idea now is to see maybe if we understand how this molecule complexes with the surface and destroys 
so corrodes the surface the, the the crystal means it is a, it can dissolve the crystal it can be um an, an medicine a drug for dissolving the the, yeah, the the kidney stone the mineral so here we wanted to use the surface that we have observed, observed uh, in interaction with this uh, molecule yeah and for that we need to do some molecular dynamics uh, and uh, it, which makes the system well let's say it makes make the calculation more complex and uh, i want to show you how it looks like okay so for um doing the molecular dynamics we have we will follow two parameters yes two variables as they call as we call it or collective variables in particular so the first thing is of course the distance between the molecule and the surface uh, close distance strong in, we have an interaction it's far away it will not interact so it's maybe less interesting and another parameter is the coordination number the coordination number of uh, the atoms of the molecule with the atoms of the surface this also will give us an idea on how well it can complex and uh, make a complex. And this is what we do, what we obtain if we do a molecular dynamics. Be careful, here it is uh, uh, for, with force fields, so it's not first principle. And uh, the white above the surface is in fact filled with water molecules. So you, so you don't see them, but they are there, yeah? Uh, what happens is that we can look at this movie during hours and hours and um, uh, maybe it will never absorb on the surface because this is what we call a rare event a rare event on the time scale we use as you see every jump in geometry is a few femtoseconds and the whole movie was only one nanosecond so if you study a diffusion you might need several picoseconds or maybe several uh, sorry several nanoseconds maybe several um, uh, microseconds okay so uh, time is here a problem because this makes the calculation more heavy. So the, now we wanted to, to, to go for, for, yeah, let's say, methods that can give us an answer. And for that, this would be called metadynamic structures, uh, metadynamic um, uh, methodologies. And one of them uh, is what we call uh, uh, repli replica exchanged molecular dynamics. So what happens is that instead of only doing one molecular dynamics with one start geometry and uh, one, yeah, one end we start with different uh, starting geometries so you see this is what you see in the graph here we have replica one two three and four and uh, we let go the we let yeah, we run the molecular dynamics and every time when we obtain maybe a better geometry that corresponds better to our conditions with our variables remember then we will continue with this uh, replica so this means that we can in fact uh, yeah, go faster in time and this is what you see here. You see the move, the, the molecule is jumping from one position to the other, and at the end it stays. You see, it stays some time on the surface at the surface. And this is what we obtain. So this gives us then a, 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 yeah, a possibility to understand how this molecule will arrive, will land uh, on the surface. At the end, we can extract the geometries, relax them. Uh, energetically and then we could obtain some uh, structures uh, of, for the interaction complex okay okay this uh, um, i can i can go a little bit faster so yeah we can of course calculate the interaction energy on the surfaces and as you remember from the first part you see that uh, the um, the interaction energy plays a role on the surface energy and if the surface energy is yeah uh, lowered or uh, or increased then you will have an effect on the morphology okay so you will create new facets or you will uh, inhibit the growth of some facets so this is what we see as well now there is another way we can uh, visualize this um, because now we have only seen a very small um, sampling but if you do this for a long time you can plot in fact the two variables the the the, the distance you see here the distance uh, between the complex and the surface and the coordination number and we plot this free energy okay and if the the graph the grafting or the, the absorption itself is at short distances and high coordination number so this is here and we start from in this from above the surface in the solvent we are there so we can in fact with this uh, plot we can make a, a profile energetic profile of the of the the absorption process okay so uh, we can we can do this for different uh, situations and we obtain the barriers for for the absorption. Now here is the, the dynamics of the 
complex on the surface where you see this the the, the molecule adsorbed uh, uh, and it stays there it's very strongly adsorbed there is one limitation on this model in this calculation this is because uh, we have not relaxed or let's say we've not taken into account the um, the effect or the relaxation of the surface as you see the surface is kept frozen this would even enhance the adsorption by the way but it was uh, taken out of the calculation due to the yeah the computational uh, <coughs> uh, cost okay so now let's start in the, the, the second part yes um now you've seen how we let's say make models uh understand try to understand the interface chemistry at the molecular level using theoretical tools this is only structural until until now what you've seen in, in some energetics but um of course it is nice to have some uh, feedback and uh, a comparison with experiment and for that spectroscopy plays a central role in these uh, in, 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 yeah, in these studies especially in kidney stones where there is a kind of tradition for many years that vibration spectroscopy is used for the analysis of them. Yeah, of course, next to the diffraction techniques uh, we, that, that are used, but uh, let's say vibration, especially infrared, and then uh, recently also Raman plays an important role. And so we we started so from some from years or some so from since some years already we started to calculate on these structures uh, the theoretical um, spectra. Raman and infrared of these species. Um, the idea is to have a kind of uh, reference uh, for the for these kidney stones because kidney stones most of the time they are not pure. Yeah, they are mixtures. They are full of defects. So of course the the spectra are not so clean and sometimes or most of the time quite difficult to interpret. And they are interpreted by focusing on a few peaks, a few uh, fingerprint peaks that uh, can by the let's say by the by the medical doctor uh, or the specialists there um, can be used as a kind of uh, um, help in the diagnostics the origin for example of the growth of a kidney stone uh, it can be determined by the species uh, by the chemical composition of the of the of the kidney stone so here we compare the infrared spectra uh, over the whole uh, uh, spectral uh, uh, of the whole spectrum from the 500 centimeters uh, minus one to the 4,000. Uh, we compare it with the experiment, yes. And we have also the Raman where we missed some experimental data, but uh, we calculated them. And so for the future, we have the, the, the reference uh, theoretical data also, okay. Uh, of course, I will not go into details because this is uh, it's, it's, it's then a case study. But once we have the vibrations, we have the intensities, and then we can also uh, so have a look on which what is the yeah. If we have the vibrations, we know which atoms are considered here. Yeah. So which are the typical functional groups uh, that are um, vibrating? Uh, there is also something interesting, which is the low um, the low wave number of vibrations. In solids, it's quite right, important for the determination of the framework, so um, and, and the purity of the structure. So we were able to do that also, which is in fact interesting because experimentally this can be quite challenging to obtain. But here we have the the data. Next to the calcium oxalate family of structures, uh, the polyhydrates, we have um, another. We have other uh, solids, uh, solid, uh, other calcium, uh, other um, uh, kidney stones, uh, which uh, we studied also, and here we have, in fact, the, the the two crystals, the two yeah molecules that crystallize more or less together in competition and tra can transform in one and uh, one in the uh, in one and the other is the cysteine cysteine uh, double crystal, and um, so. This is quite interesting to calculate also theoretically because if we have the perfect reference um, of the spectra, then we can go to the uh, to the yeah to the medical samples 
and then see if uh, what is the, for example, yeah, which species do we have in which proportion? Uh, because we can quantify them. Uh, and this is what we did. So we first tried to make or to refine the structures that exist. Uh, as you see, cysteine, cysteine, yeah, cysteine is a, a amino acid. Maybe you know that. Huh? Uh, cysteine is the, the it contains an, uh, a thiol group SH. It's one of the sulfur containing uh, amino acids, and it can form a dimer when you die uh, when yeah after dehydration, and um, this forms a typical sulfur bridge. Huh? Sulfur sulfur bridge. See that? So you see that already uh, some bonds will be uh, very uh, representative for the species. So let's now start to calculate the, the, the structures. We optimize that. And then we um, we tried to compare the crystal structures with the diffraction technique. So here is what you see are the theoretical uh, diff diffractograms uh, compared with experimental ones. So we, we confirm that we are uh, busy with the correct structures. So um, this means that we are ready to calculate here uh, the vibrations. Yeah. And this is what we did. So we did here the, the first infrared spectra, so vibrations with infrared intensities. And um, so we can compare first the cysteine cysteine, yeah, theoretically. What happens is that we see clearly the peaks of the SH, the tile group in the, in, the, in the cysteine, and in the cysteine we see appearing a peak which is related to the, the SS sulfur, uh, sulfur bridge. So we can compare three with the experimental one. Um, here it's not a kidney stone, an experimental one, I think. Uh, uh, it's uh, just um, the pure uh, or a synthesized one, uh, a pure uh, cysteine, uh, cysteine or cysteine molecule. Um, and then we, yeah, we can compare them theoretically and experimentally. Yeah? So assign the different bands. Okay, and here these are done, uh, for example, uh, yeah, the band that should be looked after if we want to make some analysis, to do some analysis on real kidney stones. So we, we, point, yeah, we, we proposed some, some bands that could be used in the, in the diagnostics of some pathologies. Yeah. So I can go to another structure, and this is the Whitlockite structure. Yeah. The Whitlockite structure is a calcium phosphate structure, but with already some defects. So the calcium phosphate, you know, this is the appetite uh, in, in, in appetite structure in, in the living, but uh, calcium can be substituted uh, and, and you can have some defects. And this makes some other minerals, which are also not only available in the living, but also in, um, in, um, yeah, in, the, in nature. And um, Whitlockite, Whitlockite is one of these minerals. And uh, what makes this interesting for the modeling is that it is a very complex structure because it has a lot of defects. Now, the question is, what are the defects or what are the most common defects? And if you know that, then we can again try to calculate properties like the spectroscopic properties in order to, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, yeah, justify the, the, the model, yeah? So this is what we did. We made the model uh, and, sorry, Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and um, try to understand these defects. One of these defects is the presence of a vacancy site, yes? And um, so we, um, uh, we, we show here the different environments of the sites that can be substituted uh, or, uh, yeah, or just um, yeah, eliminated to make a vacancy site. So here you have five different crystallographic sites and uh, you see different coordinations and uh, so from these sites, we can calculate in fact, locally what is the, 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 the stability of it. Yeah? And um, once we have that, we can, in fact, calculate the vibrations. And then, yeah, these are done. We link the vibrations with the defect. So these are the energetics in order to show which site is the most stable. So the most stable meaning the one that will occur the most in, 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 this, in, in the system, in the, in the crystal structure. And once you made a vacancy site, then okay, uh, you can continue to see what happens if you do a uh, substitution. So here are the energetics for the calcium vacancy site. So here we say that it's on the position four. That's the vacancy site, so we can take away one calcium uh, in the structure, and it's more stable to do that 
in the on the positive four. And once we have this structure, we can substitute uh, calcium by magnesium on the other side, and then we see that it is on the position five. Okay, very nicely determined. We see we do again the comparison with the diffracto uh, grams uh, and try yeah uh, to see the evolution of the. Um, um, the, the de facto gram with the, um, between the experiment and the theory. And then we have um, the spectra, the infrared, and then the Raman, also as a fun function of the presence of magnesium, for example, to see how the, the, the spectra evolves, also for the sake of the, uh, helping the, the, the doctors in their diagnostics. Yeah? Uh, here with the Raman uh, data, so also assigned all the peaks and uh, yeah for the different uh, systems the substitutions and, and so on yeah so as you can see we have uh, zero magnesium and then we go with two three and then we have some uh, experimental data to compare with <clears throat> okay this is the conclusion i think i can go a bit fast in order to have some time from the uh, left in order to, to keep the time um now uh, we switch to the second part uh, of the biominerals, which are the bone. So this is not pathologic anymore, although there can be some pathologic growth of hydroxyapatite, but here we will focus on the growth of bone. So bone is uh, a very complex material. I, I think most of you know that. Um, and um, uh, as you see, it is an hierarchical structure. What does that mean? It means that the structure at the nano level is uh, different than on the macro level. Yeah? And uh, so there are like nanoparticles which are embedded in a bioorganic uh, um, yeah, environment, uh, typically collagen polymers or e three helixes. Um, and uh, these are then yeah, stored and, 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 and yeah, folded. In, in different other objects which are assembled at higher levels, okay? But uh, what we will do here is try to understand what happens at the nano level, uh, which is also very difficult to uh, analyze experimentally, okay? So experimentally, it is quite complicated and, and here we want uh, to help uh, uh, this characterization. Uh, typically, they will form again also little platelets. These nanoparticles at uh, the nano level are platelets and they are separated from each other. This we know. Uh, it's all about a few nanometers. And the question is, what is the interface? How is the interface uh, of these nanoparticles with the environment? And um, for that, we, we need to make a model again. Which model do we have? Well, in fact, one model is not enough, as you can see, uh, because, for example, here we have the... Um, so this is our bone, yeah, okay. But the model that we propose is uh, we have these platelets with the core is crystalline, crystalline hydroxyapatite, and which is typically yeah ended uh, because yeah the particle ends somewhere. So we have some exposed surfaces again, which show some disorder. But every surface when is it that is exposed show disorder. Now the question there is yeah is this really amorphous or is this just the fact of the surface re re relaxation? reconstruction and then these platelets can interact with each other uh, so that can be crystalline crystalline uh, interaction but it can also crystalline let's say semi amorphous amorphous or it can be uh, the, with interaction with the ex, the, ex, the, uh, the yeah the physiological environment as you can see here and then um, interesting is that the yeah the crystal structure is in the core, which is crystalline, yeah, is hydroxyapatite. And um, then we need to find the model for the outside, which would be amorphous calcium uh, phosphate. Okay. A structure, by the way, which are which is still unknown experimentally and so not theoretically. Um, in order to help to make a model, we need some um, we need some uh, some input from the experiments. And one interesting data was NMR. Uh, sorry, not not uh, vibrations here for the moment uh, but uh, NMR showed us here in particular for the phosphor phosphor 31 uh, we see in two peaks yeah you see two peaks which is coupled here this is to the, to the NMR so coupled with the proton and uh, we see two two environments for the proton so this means we have a phosphor which is also involved in the hydrophos uh, hydrophosphate uh, anion okay not only phosphate so and then if we go to the 
to the minerals that we know of the calcium uh, phosphate family, then we know that hydroxyapatite is uh, it does not contain HPO4. Okay, but there is another one which is called octacalcium phosphate, which has this structure. And moreover, it's even better for us for the model because the calcium um, the octacalcium phosphate contains a unit cell where there is an an amorphous, uh, sorry, a crystalline zone, which is very related to uh, to the hydroxyapatite. Um, sorry, to opposite, the, the, this is the yellow here. The, the yellow is the crystalline part. Uh, let's say the less, um, uh, or the most symmetric part is the apatite part. And uh, so this is here. And then we have a zone, which is, uh, let's say, an hydrated, hydrated zone where we see this uh, HPO4 group. So and, and a logical uh, model would be to start uh, to use this one, yeah, the octacalcium phosphate polymorph. This is what we did. We made some surfaces. Again, we put some water on top of it, and then we do some uh, um, uh, molecular dynamics. Yeah? Uh, the distances between this, the, 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 the slabs here uh, that, that represents the platelets was also fitted to the experiment because we can, in fact, um, make bone, and we see that these platelets automatically will self-assemble with uh, a distance which is about uh, with a couple of nanometers uh, between them. So we can do that, and then we put the water between, and then we can start to model the system. And um, so this is how it looks like. So we need to, yeah, to, 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 to do some relaxation. We cut along a certain surface, the most stable one, not as you see appetite, it's quite easy. There are only two directions. Um, and then we see here the mobility of the water, for example, above the surface with the, 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 the with molecular dynamics. Okay. So we see some exchange. I will go maybe a little further because I would like to show so something also on, um, um, on another system. Um, so we do some molecular dynamics. We can see the, evol the evolution of the, of the, of the impurities, which is important. Why? Because uh, our bone is not pure hydroxyapatite. Uh, hydroxyapatite is calcium phosphate, but the bone contains also some other anions, and typically we have carbon uh, carbonate. And this is then what we call um, bioapatite. Uh, and, and, and this is what we have, and this is what we need to model. And the carbonate plays an important role in the stability of the system. So we did also that. In, in order to um, obtain an image of the amorphous phase, um, even after the molecular dynamics re remodeling, uh, let's say shaking up the, the structure in order to, to have it a little bit uh, more amorphous, um, we tried uh, to come up with some method to characterize the amorphous structures, which is called uh, pair distribution function analysis, uh, which comes from the diffraction technique. Yeah? So we have a diffraction technique and this uh, gives us a diffractogram and from that we can analyze the distance between atoms. So this is from there the pair distribution, the pair of atoms and we obtain this kind of graph where we have uh, an, an, uh, a distance of the bond and the number of bonds that we encounter. So we can have a profile uh, which is typical for the amorphous structure. Yeah, And uh, if we have this structure, uh, this means this, this uh, I mean this, um, uh, this profile, then we can try to fit uh, our model, or better, fit the profile of the model to the experimental obtained uh, PDF, uh, uh, PDF yeah, uh, graph. And um, um, so, okay. Um, then I would like to finish with the last uh, part, which is. Um, yeah, it's, it's 11.45. So with um, the exploring uh, the absorption of citrate uh, on hydroxyapatite surface by DFT. So uh, I have seen that the hydroxyapatite is part of the bone and um, the, the effect of water plays uh, in there an important role. Not, but not only water, uh, they are in the physiological environment, we have other complexing agents, yes? So in this, uh, in this solution, in this physical environment, we have, for example, citrates, citrate anions. I use this because this is a typical complexing agent, uh, which, um, yeah, let's say it can be used as a case study. Now, we use this in order to, um, 
right, to, to, to use a new method uh, to calculate spectra, infrared spectra here in particular. So we use molecular dynamics uh, for the, um, the, the calculation of the spectra. So we know the following. So we have some experimental data, okay? And then we see some typical bands, okay? Uh, this is just for the example. For the side rate, we see 1570 and uh, 1460 to 1385 bands. Okay, the question that we can ask are the following, what is the origin, the molecular origin of these two bands that we see that are typical in these uh, systems? Uh, can we characterize the absorption of site rate? Uh, so, yeah, the geometry means, eh, and then also uh, can we assign the different peaks? So can we couple structure with, with the theoretical spectroscopy? And then uh, can we provide a marker eh, to the experimentalist from our theory? So, of course, we can do this on the different uh, facets. Because here, experimentally, yeah, we, it's difficult to, to do these experiments on uh, mono crystal, mono facets and monocrystals uh, with, with a particular orientation. So we need to know which is the surface. So this makes the system uh, more complex. Okay, but let's start. So this is how we will make the model. We have a bulk, again, that uh, we cut along different orientations. The 0, 0, 001, uh, 101, and 010. 1, 0. So those are the three orientations that we will study. On top, on top, we put some water, liquid water, and then we will put in that liquid water at the surface. We put some, uh, we put the, the citrate anion um, in different orientations. Okay, parallel, up, parallel, down, and then vertical. Yeah. Okay, and then we start to do the calculation. So molecular dynamics. Okay, here we did it uh, with, um, as you see, the model is a little bit smaller. So we were able to do this with um, Apinicio, which is important for getting uh, data out of this uh, molecular dynamic simulation for the calculation of our infrared spectral uh, intensities. Okay, so yeah, if you want to some more questions, uh, comments on, on, on how it works, you can ask this uh, after, the, after the, the seminar. So um, molecular dynamics, in fact, what we, yeah, I will have to tell you something uh, because otherwise it's quite difficult, but what we will do is um, we will try to calculate uh, at the dipole moment yeah, as a function of the of time uh, because it's the change in dipole moment uh, that will give us the intensities here. Yeah. So this is how it looks, okay? Just what I just said before, how we make the model on the different uh, systems, we do molecular dynamics. Uh, this is how we did it. So for the technical data, uh, for the technical, uh, yeah, the technical data here. So uh, NVT ensemble, then uh, radial distribution was checked, and then we did an, uh, a last run on NVE, and then we calculated the infrared spectra with these data. And this is then the result for the different uh, situations: the pure water. Uh, with uh, the surface, with the appetite, and then the citrate in the different orientations. And then we have here uh, the, the different surfaces uh, for the, of the crystal. So what we can see first is the apparition of this peak, uh, which is linked to the water bending region. So we, we want to look a little closer to that. Yeah? And another part is, so if we look here, I go back, yeah, we see this one. So if we look here now, then we see it is consisted, consisted of different peaks and in different uh, uh, features. So let's try to understand the difference because without citrate, uh, sorry, without citrate, you have nothing. Yeah. And then you see appearing these things with the citrate. Yeah. So this is typically linked then to the absorption geometry, two bands appearing. Yeah. So can this be related to these peaks? And uh, indeed, it is in this region already. So we have already a good uh, agreement. Yeah, so it's good, good to see. Uh, but uh, what is the, the, the origin now? So these bands are there, we find them, but to which vibrations are these, in fact, uh, uh, originating? And then we can, in fact, now go uh, and have a look closer to the atoms. How uh, are they positioned? What are the neighbors? What are the interactions? And this is what we see. Uh, I don't know if you know, uh, citrate is there are three carboxylic groups. So this is one here, you see this, OCO, yeah? And uh, which is interacting with these, uh, yeah, these gray-blue one uh, ions, which are the, the calciums, yes? 
and so you see that there is one oxygen which is interacting with uh, one calcium but here is an oxygen with two yeah so this gives us uh, an already an idea on the differences in geometry and in vibrations so yeah i, I can i can go deep into that but we see in fact the 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 different um, uh, vibrations related to the interactions yeah? and the, the, the distance is also uh, now we can separate in fact the different vibrations uh, of um, of the spectra and um, so the contributions of every type of, of, of vibration yeah and um, you see here if we look to our complete spectra and we we deconvolute it into uh, a water spectra a citrate spectra and uh, the the solid sorry yeah um we can see the following so when we see water yeah you see it goes uh, it is a big peak here band here so the same thing then we have the solid it's all over here uh almost not present in this region and it's a citrate that that is present you see and for every orientation we have another profile so in fact if there is uh, an intensity difference we can in fact point the different uh, uh, uh the different bands to the different geometry so we assign a geometry of adsorption to a, 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 a spectroscopic band. <clears throat> so what are now these bands exactly? Well, uh, after some analysis, um, we found the following. So the band of the 1570 is exclusively due to the citrate carboxylate group adsorbed on the appetite surface. And the band of 30, 50, 1350 arises from the OH band on the citrate. You see here, this is, there is one OH group yeah, and three carboxylate. Okay, conclusion, maybe I will skip because it's time. So in fact, yeah, uh, the general conclusion, I, will, I hope yeah, you, you, would, you can see that in fact we can, and this can be for uh, in general, uh, in, in the solids and interfaces, we can now uh, couple uh, the experimental uh, spectroscopy with theory and uh, give a very clear explanation on the absorption geometry uh, at the molecular and uh, atomic level yeah so i think i have to thank the people that were working here in, in uh, on, on these different projects all over the years um and uh, i think also i have to thank my uh, uh, the finance and charisma also by the way and uh, you for your attention thank you i think there is now time for some questions in the chat Good, so I have the chat open now. The, ah, okay, there is a, there are some questions in the question panel. I have to open this. I'm sorry, I'm not so familiar with this now. Um, the question panel. Ah, okay, there is one. Yeah, uh, only substitutional defect. I mean, this is uh, you talk about uh, the the Wittlockite um, uh, system, but it's substitution. Uh, we are free to make the defects we want. Yeah. Uh, in the Wittlockite, what is interesting is that we have different types of defects, eh? uh, not only substitutional, as you can say, we can, um, yeah, we can just make some vacancy sites. This is, uh, you can say this is also substitutional because you change this with, with nothing. <laughs> but um, maybe if you think about uh, defects, you can also think on, uh, uh, yeah, surface defects, for example, yeah? or a surface itself is also a defect. Um, this can also be included in the model. Uh, we can some, we can put some. Um, if we talk about oxides, for example, we can uh, put some uh, uh, oxide monomers on, on top of the surface. Uh, we can uh, uh, take away some oxygen. We can take away some metal or uh, transition metal atoms. Um, other defects. Um, 
yeah, interfaces is, is also typically a defect. Eh? Um, and this is what you've seen in the in the bone there. We have different ways to to interact, uh, to make interaction between particles. So uh, it can be solid liquid or solid solid. Uh, in fact, everything which is not bulk is kind of uh, a defect, yes. So, but we can include this uh, easily. The question is, of course, defect, you yeah, know, also, not a, I can continue to talk about that, you know, but um, uh, this remem reminds me about some impurities, for example. Uh, in, yeah, in, impurities, there you have um, uh, the question of the concentration, and this has an effect on the calculation cost. So if you have one on one million, then you can imagine that you need at least one million atoms, yes? So then we have some problems there, but uh, then we try with other concentrations, of course. But um, yeah, defects can be done normally. Are there, are there other questions? Thank you. Properly the model. Uh, maybe I don't really understand what you mean it properly, or, or, the, or the, is the sentence not complete? Um, ah, oh yeah, oh, sorry. Now I see the questions. Um, I didn't open the... I have two questions there. Hi, first of all, thank you for the nice presentation. I have two questions. Why aspects do... Uh, which aspect do you consider to use are ah, the B, uh, PBE D3 functional to perform calculations? Okay, first that rapidly, uh, let's say that PBE in the in the DFT, product DFT is quite generalized now, uh, price quality. So we know what goes well and we know what doesn't go well. So this is also important to know in the model. And we added the, the, the dispersion D3, which performs very well and it's also in, interesting to as the correction uh, in, in a reasonable lapse of time. So I would say uh, don't change a winning team. So this is my answer on that. And how do you know how many water molecules you need to introduce in the system to simulate properly the model? Okay, how many water molecules? Uh, in fact, we try to get the, the density of water, liquid water. Uh, so the, the one gram per milliliter. But that is indeed a very interesting question where I think many people don't real the, don't know the real question because you have the, the, the confinement problem problems. So what happens if you have uh, particles which are close to each other and there are some cavities of one nanometer or, or two or five nanometers, even that, uh, do you still have some liquid water there? Can you talk about liquid water? Uh, a droplet of five or 10 water molecules, is this water, liquid water? You see, this is uh, a quite difficult thing because uh, there you have the interaction with the system with the, with, uh, yeah, with the chemical system, the solid, uh, which is very important. But since we don't know the answer, we consider it um, one, uh, so we consider the density of water at one milligram per milliliter. But what we see if we use, for example, pores, or we have these sandwiches, as you see, that there is, of course, um, a reorganization. Eh? Uh, and at the surface, you have also like uh, the double layer, eh? the famous double layer that you see appearing due to the polarization. So there is, of course, a reorganization of the liquid water. Um, and this can be uh, yeah, simulated with the molecular dynamics, uh, but it's still, it's, yeah, I, I think it's difficult to get the, to obtain the real answer to that. There is maybe something else. Or... Sorry. There, I don't know, there is. And right, we have the we are at the end of the the time. I think that was given to me, right? So then I think we should stop here. And and I wish uh, yeah a good day and thank you for uh, yeah being present in the webinar. Thank you. Bye bye.